Hey folks, welcome to today's show. I have to check the date. It is September 20th and this is day 47, which really means we only have 46 more days to go. Yeah. So things are moving along. I finally got my camera working. So now when I look weirdly at the top of my computer, I'm looking at the right place because the camera's working. I'm so happy. So I have left you hanging on two fronts. One is the inner circle, Trump's inner circle. We talked about the convicts two days ago. Today, I'm going to finish up with the rest of the very bad boys that are in his inner circle. And the other thing is tomorrow, I should have the part two of about men who don't hate women. So I uh, got a lot of traction on the men, the Trump, the Trump people who hate women. And I want to make sure that I give uh, equal time, as it were. Actually, I'm very, very excited about talking about the good qualities in men and men who support women and men who don't have a problem with um, overt racism. I mean, we all battle our own our own monsters on that front. But I think that there's people out there who work hard to not be racist and there's people who give no you know what. So th that one's coming tomorrow. Uh, I'm just going to try to clean things up. I've got the pollsters going to come back and talk to us about abortion polling, which is interesting because I think that. Uh, we hear a lot about the polls, but he's going to talk to us about that issue in particular. And then he'll be back in October when the polls start to become serious. I didn't have a chance to watch Oprah yet. I'm going to watch that later today. And then tonight is the MSNBC uh, Rachel Maddow's um, documentary to Russia with Love. And I ran by the grocery store this morning because I got to make sure I had popcorn, right? And I ran into a woman there who it, it, is so over it. It was great. I'm just, you know, I, I'm so alone that I go out and I just talk to people, strangers all the time. But it was exciting. She was, didn't know about what was coming. And so she's excited about the documentary tonight. I'm sure it's going to be streaming all weekend. It won't be something you have to watch real time, but I'm going to because it's kind of fun sometimes to sit on Twitter and uh, share and, and watch with somebody else. So just those are my announcements, announcements. Uh, everything else is under control. And we're going to talk about the bad boys. So in our last episode, we talked about the criminals that surround Trump, Giuliani, Bannon. Uh, in fact, here, well, I, mean, I just put their little freaking pictures up here. We talked about Giuliani and Roger Stone and Mike Flynn and Steve Bannon, who is still in lockup, but it won't be much longer. I think it was only for four months. So I'm, I don't know if he's out before the election, but I'm sure he'll make every effort to uh, screw the pooch. So we're in a mess now politically. It, it's interesting when I talk about the bad boys, I'm, these are essentially the younger ones that are part of his crowd. And some of them have had arrest records. The last man we'll talk about today has had an arrest record. It's for sexual battery, I believe. Um, I didn't go do the research on that because frankly, I don't freaking care. I hate them all. So here's the deal. Let's talk about why so this is the younger guys. The, the, these, these Giuliani, Stone, Flynn is kind of young, kind of old. I mean, young in terms of like, he's still got some time to do some damage. That's a versus, uh, and the other guys, Bannon, Stone, and, and Giuliani, they're they're old farts. They're, they're hot mess, as is the candidate, Trump. So when, but Trump, you know, he has to have sycophants around. He has to have the people that are licking his boots and kissing his ass and everything else that sounds disgusting to me. He's got to have those people around. And so uh, the younger guys, they tend to be more polished and media savvy for sure. And, but their ideology is messed up. These young men, one of them who is like really good looking, but he's a predator. And so I, I just, there's so many male predators out there, especially these white men that are predators. I don't get it. I just don't know who anointed them kings and said they can just do whatever they want with other humans but here we are so the reason you need to know the, why these people are around why it's important to know the people around trump is because as a narcissist he listens to these people that kiss his ass that's the most important reason those narcissists need that constant care and feeding and constant care and feeding that's just how they roll so that's why he wants these guys around and the men are skilled at whispering in Trump's ear and shaping his policies. And they probably do that. <laughs> women, I'm doing my elbow. The <laughs> women jokes, you know, locker room talk, whatever that stuff is. The danger, though, is the policies they advocate aren't just the only danger. It's how they push Trump into this authoritarianism and how they maneuver behind the scenes. These guys in particular, these four don't necessarily have a formal role, but 
man, are they in it. So let, let me just show you who the first one is. And you're not going to, you're not going to be surprised at all. It's Tucker Carlson. And I've given them all like little fake names, but I call him the firebrand because that's what he likes to be known as, right? He goes around, he's got media, he's got media training. He knows how to manage the camera. He knows how to manage the message. And he is our authoritarian right-wing media, media personality. He used to be at Fox, but he got let go because he was doing bad things. And his views on democracy are really troubling. He cloaks his rhetoric in the guise of defending freedom. That's his big thing. Ah, freedom, freedom. Guess where he went on his big junk, junket for freedom? He went to Russia. Russia has zero freedom. The oligarchs have freedom, but they kind of don't because, you know, if you're a bad oligarch, you know what happens to you, don't you? You end up getting pushed out of a window or served a drug that knocks you out. Forget the name of the drug right now, but you will be poisoned. So I'm just saying, Tucker's appreciation for Russia and saying that that's like a kind of democracy is batshit crazy. He cloaks his rhetoric in the guise of defending freedom and American values and Car Carlson's regularly promoted conspiracy theories that undermine faith in democratic institutions, questions the legitimacy of elections, and that certain <clears throat> certain demographics are a threat to our American identity. That's a really fun way to say, if you're a person of color, and also if you're a woman, and if you're transgender, or if you're gay, or apparently maybe if you like um, puffed Cheetos and not Frenchy Cheetos, you might not be worthy of being an American. Saying it's based on his point of view. That's how he decides it. So he's advocated for anti-democratic policies and prioritizes nationalism over individual rights. And of course, he's a big supporter of Putin and Russia. Trust Trump trusts Carlson because they have been whispering in each other's ear for years. Carlson uses his platform to support Trump's conservative viewers and his conservative views. And Carlson's outreach is there to manipulate public opinion. Trust, Trump trusts Carlson because of his ability to frame narratives that resonate with Trump's base. Carlson is like, I hate to say it, he's a little bit like me. He can figure out how to spin the message for the audience. Um, in fact, I did a test on the men and uh, women and Trump, and I did one as men, Trump fears women and Trump hates women. Same content, but that's how you, you do tests. You do tests. So Carlson does tests all the time to see what messages. He's like a message tester for Trump, which is really important when you're in marketing. You've got to have somebody who can test the messages and see what gets what resonates and what gets picked up and not or not. So as a marketer, we do this all the time. But this is also very savvy for a broadcaster. Now, what is what is uh, Tucker done? He has been very, excuse me, very active in anti-immigrant rhetoric. He's a proponent of the great replacement theory that says the migrants are here to replace us. White people are going to be replaced. Oh, God, not fast enough, right? Undermining the 2020 election. Tucker was all over this and the 2020 election. Casting doubts, spreading the baseless claims of voter fraud. He was a big part of that. And of course, so you could see where he's kind of the mouthpiece for Trump in that way. He can go out and trot out Trump stories. And then, of course, he promotes nationalism, which is, Trump's America first ideology with the um, it's the Jews will not replace this crap from Charles Charleston. It's the grossest stuff you've seen. It's the Haitians who are there legally in Ohio aren't there legally anymore because we changed our mind, which is interesting because um, it really sets us up for our next uh, bad boy. But Carlson, just watch him. His MO is to use his platform as a megaphone. He's teamed up with Elon. He's teamed up with other authoritarians in other countries. He is a bad man, and he's trying to get people to, to swallow the bitter pill of authoritarianism by sugarcoating it with his Tuckum's giggle <laughs> and his bad haircut. And I know all about bad haircuts. Carlson pushes the narrative that questions the legitimacy of democratic processes and stokes division. And he relies, he has made his money, not just off his Swanson fortune. That's right. The Swanson TV dinners we used to eat during the Wizard of Oz. That's his family of money. Isn't that sad? 
That money is what he has in his trust fund, but he makes his money on inflammatory rhetoric and conspiracy theories. And he's considered one of the most dangerous figures in the media landscape today. There you go. Who's up next? Oh my God, you love to loathe them. It's Stephen Miller, who will absolutely sometimes make me, I feel, I wish I could do. If you've never seen Stephen Colbert hold back the need to regurgitate, he's the master. He's the, I'm not even going to pretend to compete with him, but I'm telling you what, looking at Stephen Miller makes me feel that way. He is, of course, the architect of Trump's immigration policy, affectionately known as the Goebbels of the Trump administration. And that is the mass extinction event that he wants to do of every person that <clears throat> does not look like him. Of course, we need to be operating on a different platform we need to do maybe a mass extension of everyone that looks like Stephen Miller but that's that's not fair because there's a lot of good men in fact a lot of it is just guy he looks very Jewish to me he looks like a very Jewish guy so a lot of Jewish guys look like this they just don't quite have his satanic overtones all right he is still a senior advisor but he's really involved in project 2025 and that's what I mean these guys are not directly there although Stephen is waiting in the wings to be on Trump's cabinet when Trump is elected he is one of the the chosen ones, and they would love him because he gives no fucks. He's ruthless about his racism. He is the one who separated the children from their parents at the border. He is the one who brought his fiance down to see the children being separated by their by the government, separated from their parents. It's unbelievable he brought his girlfriend down to see that they're married now. I think they have a child. We might have to go rec rec rescue that child. So anywho, He's coming back. He's not really gone. He's influenced the hell out of Project 2025. And he he actually, I think he like gets off on racism. He's that twisted. It's that perverse. So Stephen Miller, his views on democracy is he wants an ethno-national worldview. White power, that's what that means. He wants this, a white nation. And it's antithetical to democracy. His policies revolve around limiting immigration, maintaining a majority white demographic. Now, remember, there's only 59.7% of people as of 2020 in the census, 59.7% of people are white. Of that, you've got to guess about half are men. So that's 30% of people are white men, but they are scared to death. Go read about why they fear and hate women. They, they're scared to death. All right, so Trump trusts this son of a bitch. I mean, really, this guy is a son of a bitch because of the anti-immic rhetoric that made Trump his most trusted advisor. Because remember, deep down, Trump is in, in, his, in his DNA, in his body, he is racist. He has always been racist. He was raised by a racist, an active racist. I don't mean someone who's just not woke yet. I mean somebody who literally believes in racism. So Trump probably finds Stephen oddly attractive. Stephen does kind of look like Ray Cohn when that movie comes out in October. That'll be interesting. But there's something because the rest of us would look at Stephen Miller and like actually walk away. The, the vibe coming off this man is creepy, right? But but Trump is actually attracted to him and it's probably for some of that debauched say, uh, uh, not, it's not satan Satanism, it's sadism. That's what it is. It's debauched sadism in that Stephen likes to hurt people. And frankly, Trump likes to hurt people. It's just, I think he's got to be a little reeled in right now, but that's, that's his MO as well. He raped his wife. I mean, this man, these, these men just think the world is theirs and they can take it. So what's Miller's impact been? Let's take a look because he did the travel ban. So he and Bannon came out hard right away when Trump was elected to do the travel ban. If you remember that, it was hell. It was awful. It was the worst. And it just created chaos. Then he did family separation. Key figure in that. It led to thousands of children being taken away from their parents at the border. I'd like to know where all those children are. I don't know if they've all been accounted for, but I really do worry about kids getting sent into trafficking. When, when you take kids away from the person that wakes up and goes to sleep every day thinking about them and just put them in a system, kids don't get taken care of very well. So I'm really worried about those kids. And then the DACA rollback. He does not want the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, those DACA kids who, were, who, who basically have only knows America as their home. He wants to dismantle it. 
and he, he's going to come back and do that. In fact, they just talked about deporting people. Sorry, I want to get this right. They want to deport people who are already naturalized citizens. They're going to denaturalize them, which is, I thought you could only buy an alcohol, but apparently you can denaturalize, naturalize. You can't, but they're going to do it. That's the thing. If you notice with the Trump administration and with the Trump way of being, he just does it. He doesn't care if it's legal or not. Catch him. Catch him if you can. He is the classic ask for permission. No way. Ask for forgiveness. And he didn't even ask for forgiveness. Essentially, what Trump has proven with his married band of criminals is that if you're not going to have an attorney general in your nation that says, oh, hell no, then a lot of bad stuff can keep happening because you can just go hard. It's kind of what Rockford taught us. If you want to get away with something, just act like you know what you're doing and do it. That's Jim Rockford. If you don't know who Jim Rockford is, uh, sorry, people of a certain age, but he was a god. All right. Let me get you to your next. Oh, uh, and, and Stephen Miller's MO always is to exploit fear and push policies that align with white nationalist ideology. So he doesn't care about the rules. This is one of the reasons I think Stephen Miller is so popular with Trump. Trump, he just doesn't care. He doesn't care about immigration, civil liberties, human rights, none of that. Those are things that only white people get to have. Everybody else doesn't get to have them. That's probably the best way to think about Stephen Miller. And knowing he's Jewish is only the icing on the cake because he doesn't even understand half of this is his own self-loathing, but that's okay. And here's our, here's another one that's back. Corey Lewandowski. He's the enforcer. I love this picture. He looks like the enforcer. This man's a shit stick. He is a pain in the ass, and I believe he has been arrested for domestic. Uh, he is um, not that old, and he was the former campaign, campaign manager for Trump. But here's the deal. He's back. And the more research I did on trying to figure out what it is he's exactly doing right now, he's essentially just hanging out. The, the campaign itself, which is um, Le Chris Levita and the woman, the two people running his campaign right now, Trump's campaign, they don't like Corey, but Trump likes Corey. First of all, Corey's good looking, right? I mean, he looks terrible here, but he's got that look Trump always aspired to, which is to be a good looking man, not an ugly man. And so that's one reason Corey's around. But the other is Corey seems to do the shit that Trump really secretly wants to do, especially when it comes to being um a thug like you know that guy at the bar who could like kind of get up and pop up into everybody's chest i think trump enjoys working with Corey. do that Corey seems to think democracy is a tool to be manipulated for personal and political gain so this this guy Corey, and the next guy in particular have really figured out how to run the board for both their personal brand and working with trump so these two guys really are into their personal brand Lewandowski believes uh, or has shown little regard for the principles of accountability and he is used to using underhanded tactics to keep Trump's campaign on track. His aggressive style re uh, reflects a win at any cost mentality, which makes Trump so happy. They're doing it now. They're trying to do it now. Win at any cost. Trump trusts Lewandowski because he will bend the rules and secure victories for Trump regardless of the rules. Like he just doesn't care. He'll just go for it. And Lewandowski is known for his hard-nosed tactics and fierce defense of Trump's political persona. And his actions have even raised ethical concerns. Shocking. There were rumors it was him at Arlington, but I don't think it really was. I think it was somebody else when they finally got it out. But but Corey is such a lightning rod. That's who they thought was that shoved the woman at Arlington Cemetery when Trump did his little political stunt there. So what has this guy done that needs to be on our radar? Well, he managed Trump's 2016 campaign. And that was a lot about who, who influenced whom. And it was he working with Russia and how he was moving information, ill-got information through the campaign and back out into the media. So that was Corey doing a lot of that. He also is big. Well, here's the next one. He's a bit media manipulator. He likes to argue, he likes to be controversial, and he thinks that all gets it more coverage. The louder, the, the nastier you can be. He likes that coverage. He wants to drop Trump. He wants to attract that to Trump. And then, of course, he was a big election denier. So whatever. I mean, if you're going to be, of course, you're going to end up with Trump. There's no place else to work. 
if you're if you've been an election denier, I don't know who else wants to hire you. So that's our good friend Corey. And then we have, that's right, Mr. Beautiful, Mr. Wonderful, the man we all want to hurt right now, Johnny McEntee. So Johnny is the guy who said, just somebody please tell me how many women are bleeding out because of the abortion ban. Not sure I got that impression right, but it sounded kind of like that. And he's been a gatekeeper in the Trump um in the Trump cadre. But the thing is he went away for a while. And he's not even a formal member of it now. He is around Trump, but he is, wait for it, the Project 2025 liaison, don't you know? So Trump, you know, who has nothing to do with the Project 2025. Somebody just called me a liar on, on the internet. It's so funny. They're like, you're lying. And I go, you're stupid. I don't know how stupid you are. He's in the, Trump's name is in Project 2025, 327 times. Trump has no plan for America. We all know this. Everybody listening to this knows that. Trump doesn't know what a plan is. He doesn't work with plans. His business was transactional his whole life. His business was transactional. Don't, you can tell me he built the building. No, he didn't. He had a general that built the building. Trump is not a plan guy. He's a brand guy. He's a marketer. Guy. And he's also a shill. But the point is that if, if he is in Project 2025, that is the plan he needs to use. And without that plan, he has nothing. And the thing is, the, the, he doesn't care. Trump is super happy being the face of it. You know why? Because he doesn't have to do the work. The work's been done for him. And Johnny McEntee right now is the Trump whisperer because Trump loves him. So Johnny can get right close to Trump's ears and keep him going on Project 2025. He was really big on the loyalty test. He's the one that ran the personal office. And he was the one that um, was trying to get the, the loyalists in office. Well, that's what he's doing for Project 2025. He is involved in the loyal te loyalty testing and filling the key positions they're going to want in the in their cabinet when Trump wins. That's his job right now. So he is working very closely with the Trump transition team, which is funny to think of because I don't know what they transition. Although this time Project 2025 is in charge and this time it's going to be huge. All those white men afraid. Could you? I don't know if we've ever seen this big of an army of white men in fear, all working together towards one goal, other than Mitch McConnell and the Federalist Society. That's another group of white men who live in fear. Okay, so Trump trusts McAtee, partly because he's beautiful, right? Trump loves people spreading out of central casting. But also, McAtee's shown this willingness to protect Trump over everything else. And so he's he, he rose quickly, I'm sure because of his beauty, and his loyalty, and because Trump feels like maybe he could get him some women. Who knows? It's also twisted. But this guy is a twisted fuck when it comes to women. He really, really is. And he, it's been it's talked about on the internet. Tizzy e Entertainment just posted Tizzy T I Z Z Y E N T. He's on Twitter. Twiz Tizzy Entertainment just posted something about him. This guy is a bad man. But let's talk about his impact. Here's what he has done. He has he wants to purge the government. So he started doing that in the second half of the Trump administration. When they brought him in, they promoted him and promoted him and promoted him. And he was charged with finding loyalists. He has more loyalty than he has competence, which seems like that would be a Trump team requirement. So he is known for loyalty over competence. And he has put um, unqualified people in, you know, like Amy Coney Barrett. And he didn't do that one. That was Mitch. But she's unqualified or, or Kavanaugh, you know, unqualified people in these jobs, they, they put unqualified because it's loyalty over competence. And then of course the 2020 election aftermath, the coup, he, uh, McEntee was all down for the election fraud and working behind the scenes to back Trump, Trump's efforts to overturn the results. That was him. Like if you're in, I guess if you're in, you're all in. So the deal is that the reason I want you to know about these guys is that the company you keep can really does really reflect on who you are as a person. And these guys are hanging around Trump. They're spending time with him. They're whispering in his ear. And their bad behavior extends beyond their role as a campaign player. These four men actually in the world, Tucker and McEntee and Lewandowski and uh, Miller are all bad actors in their own worlds in addition to what they bring to Trump. 
And I think it's really important we know these names because we don't want to ever have them be around us again. And in the meantime, I want you to get ready for voting. It's getting time. We just saw uh, who opened their polls today, Virginia or somebody. They had more voters by 1 p.m. than they had all of first day voting last year. That's good. That's always a good sign. But we've it's not over, guys. And it's still going to get uglier. I, you know, I think I'll do a blog on October surprises because I want to go back and remember all the October surprises of the past and what they did. And, and I know we're going to have many, although I'm not sure it's going to be the same this year because usually candidates have like a good, healthy vessel, a boat or something. That boat can live on the water. And if it gets a hole, you patch the vessel, but you keep going. You might take on some water, but you can still float. I kind of feel like Trump's on one of those Tom Sawyer rafts that was built about with with rope and whip sticks and boards slashed together. And it has so many holes in it. So I don't know if we can really get a good October surprise. Yesterday's news alone was exhausting. Between that governor candidate in North Carolina, which which Carolina is he in? I don't know. I, I can't even believe he's a candidate. Not to mention, like, I just couldn't look at any of the stuff that was that was talked about. It was so vulgar. Vulgar. I do not. I can make good, funny jokes, but I don't like vulgarity. And then we have poor Olivia Nuzzi, who decided she had to have some of that over 70 JFK Jr. action, which is just no, no. And then my favorite, speaking of great young guns right around the president, Matt Gates. I guess they got him finally. They've got enough evidence on this son of a bitch. So his pedophile days are over. Uh, or will be soon, I hope. Although the Republicans never quit when they're caught. They just keep going. So I'm telling you, if you just act like you're staying, you can stay. Jim Rockford, I'm telling you. All right. Thank you for listening today. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Have a great day.